Polish Woman podcast show. I am Jessica R. Bonavash, your host for the Polish Woman. Okay, it's April now, Aaron. What's happening? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's tax season. What else? Uh, it's spring break. I think it's the start of spring break, right? right? And then it's also the Lenten season. So many happenings. And spring. Oh my gosh. See, I'm wearing a spring outfit from Froxy. If you want some secondhand clothes from your favorite, favorite, um, what do you call this, influencers or actors, you know, showbiz personalities, go to froxy.com and buy their clothes so you feel like maybe you're one of them or wearing your favorite influencers' clothes. So, froxy.com. Okay, I'm excited for our guest for today. She's one of my close friend, closest friend in the Philippines and I've known her for years and you know of course we've been through you know ups and downs in the show business and all the stuff so she'll tell us about herself but first of all I love her I, I you know I, I love that we share the same fate and for those of you who know me or who follows me on my social media I'm very very open about my faith and I'm so glad that you know this person is as open as me and so we'll talk about it. What do you do when trials hit your life? Sometimes you know difficulties are that we face are you know sometimes from three sources. Number one, I believe, okay, number one, God allows us trials so that He's trying to test your faith or somehow trying to get your attention. Number two, I think somehow there is some source outside, evil or something that's trying to attack you. And number three, he's trying to, you know, it's from our own choices. You know, it becomes a sin. It's your own choice. You know, you did, you do something, then you go to this difficulty and trial. So that's why our guest for today will, will find out what happened to her. How did she overcome this trial? And of course, because of faith. But I want to ask her how she really did it. Okay, <laughs> Donita Rose Kellett. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the Polish Woman Show. Finally, I was wondering when I you were going to have me on here. <laughs> I'm trying to. I, I know you're so busy, you know, after moving to the U.S. Well, I'm busy because you helped me get a job. Oh my gosh! Are you <laughs> always... <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm so happy. I feel like. I always tell you this, I feel like the other day when we spoke, there was a purpose. I'm so actually happy that you're here and she'll tell us that, yeah. excitement, yeah, that exciting news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just tell us a little bit story. Wait, oh wait, I, I have to tell, normally I give, I give um, a quote or something mm -hmm. for the day. So for this Monday, it's from Faith Evans or Evans. How do you Faith Evans, it? yeah. Faith Evans. And she's very faithful as well. Huh? Mm -hmm. or, very Christian faith. Faith is not a sense, nor sight, nor reason, but taking God at his work. Oh, taking that. God at his what? At his work. Oh. Good, no? I Wasn't she that. married to Notorious B.I.G.? I don't know. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I guess he's, she's, yeah, her faith is like pretty strong. That's awesome. Wait, who is that again? Notorious B.I.G.? <laughs> Biggie. Biggie Smalls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he's the son again. What is that son again? <laughs> Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes you worry, <laughs> just hypnotize me. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, I'm talking about Faith Hill. Oh. That's different, right? So Faith Evans and Faith Hill. Okay, that's different, oh, yeah. I guess. Okay, Dee, tell us, tell the viewers about a little bit about you. Okay, okay Donita is a huge in my country and in Asia, not just in the Philippines, but in Asia. Okay, <laughs> tell them about yourself. Okay, hi. <laughs> I'm Danita, and uh, um, so I'm half Filipino, half American. Uh, my dad was in the military, and uh, mm -hmm. I was born in Utah. Then five and a half years later, we moved back to the Philippines mm -hmm. and, you know, lived my life uh, um, going to school on the military base. And uh, when I was 16, I got discovered in uh, Philippine showbiz. So mm -hmm. that was just very random. We were just walking through the studio. And I just so happened to get discovered in the audience, and that was on a um, teenage variety show called That's Entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't speak a word of Tagalog or Filipino, and uh, I, how I kind of came to fame was 
I was just very game to always try to speak the language and I would always bomb every line I'd say mm -hmm. and people thought I was cute. I was like, you know what, I'll make a career out of this. This is fine. So <laughs> I became a quasi comedian, right? Um, I started doing movies. I, I mean, I did start, uh, with, my first movie was a comedy film mm -hmm. and, and then eventually I went into doing action and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I ended up on a, um, uh, a sitcom called Over the, Over the Bakud or Over the yeah. Fence. And my name there was Barbie Dal De Niro. I was from the rich family uh -huh. and the poor family lived next door, supposedly. Yeah. And they, it was just really like a, a stark contrast and disparity between the rich and the poor and mm -hmm. kind of like a dark play on that or like a funny play on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I became infamously known as Barbie Dal. Uh, <laughs> and then eventually, you know, I, I dabbled in, you know, hosting and, and all of those things, dancing. Mm -hmm. Um, Jessica was um, one of my my best friends, very very yes, close friend. Yes. And so we we'd see each other all the time, and yeah. even had our party days together. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but who who knew that we would end up where we are today, right? I know, right? So when I was uh, 22, going on 23, I you know I was in my party days and stuff, and uh, I knew. Uh, I grew up in a Christian family and I knew that God, you know, really didn't want me to be doing these things. I would read my Bible every day growing up as a kid, uh, all the way up into adulthood. And I, there was always this fear in me that, you know, I do love God and I want to do what's right. But, you know, life and fun and yeah. bad stuff, you know, it's hard to stay away from. And uh, I got into some trouble, you know, here and there. And uh, when I had... One of my lowest points in my life, I surrendered my life to Jesus completely. And that was really the start of everything turning around. I mean, I've always loved and sort of known God. I've, I, I believe in salvation, right? Like salvation is you receive Jesus into your heart. But for me, the start of my spiritual journey really began when I surrendered everything to him. And I call that lordship. When, when I received him wholeheartedly into my heart and said, you know what, I'm not taking over my life anymore. I'm going to do it your way and I'm going to follow your ways. And that's when my dreams started becoming a reality. Um, one of my biggest dream was to become an MTV VJ. Um, yeah. I was just obsessed with MTV as a kid. I would record, you know, all the videos and copy the dance moves and, you know, pretend to be a VJ. And um, I get a call one day and they asked me to move to Singapore. So I was an MTV VJ in uh, Asia mm -hmm. for five years. Wow. And it was a dream come true. I got to travel the world. I got to interview Hollywood celebrities and um, people like Richard Branson yeah. and like all these like crazy infamous people. Um, so yeah. Um, and the funny thing is that when I moved to Singapore, I had just, you know, surrendered my life to Christ. And six months later, there was, there was a period of uh, um, not getting the job immediately, mm -hmm. like my, my um, job status was like on hold, mm -hmm. but I know God was doing a work in my heart and I, I really started like delving into the word and, and really understanding it now and just getting all these revelations of who he was. And I was just so madly in love with my walk with God. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Singapore and that's when the real heavy partying yeah. and drugs and alcohol, all that came in and I, I didn't want to be a part of any of that anymore. I focused on my walk with God. I went to Bible school yeah. for two years and I took off, you know, I became, they, they called me MTV most wanted. I mean, we had the, the yeah. title of the show was most wanted, but mm -hmm. they kind of associated me with as the most wanted. I was on the cover of time magazine and I know. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, hosting, you know, fashion shows and yeah. like all sorts of crazy big events. I, I, I was on the, um, MTV Awards in China. Uh, I hosted that event in front of like a billion households yeah. uh, or a hundred million households or something like that. And, you know, God took me places that I never, ever thought I'd be. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never looked back since. Yeah. And fast forward later, um, I met uh, whom I thought was the love of my life. He was the best friend of my brother since we were kids. And I fell in love and two and a half years later, we got married. Mm -hmm. Um, had my son immediately, um, yeah. who's now 17. His name is JP, Joshua Paul, after my two brothers. And uh, after 12 years of marriage, it didn't work out. So mm -hmm. I was utterly crushed. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I thought that would be kind of like the end, so to speak, of my testimony, mm -hmm. that maybe I was a failure. 
but um, after a couple of years of healing, uh, counseling and restoration, I've, I've come to forgive and I, I, I think I'm pretty much fully healed now uh -huh. <laughs> and learning to laugh and enjoy life again. And um, somewhere in that process of us splitting up, I decided that I wanted to go into culinary and, you know, there wasn't a lot of support from his hand, end on that in that um, department. And so I had to juggle so many things, you know, the, the learning curve was very steep for learning how to deal with separation and into divorce and changing careers from, yeah. from show business to, to culinary. So it was, it was a very tough, tough journey for me, but I would say that at the end of the day, I really like the person that I am. Ah, yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I was going to ask you what made you shift from being in the entertainment industry and then the culinary? Yeah, well, so after having my son, um, you know, I guess maybe projects mm -hmm. weren't started to dwindle down because, yeah. you know, you're a married woman now yeah. and you're not yeah. so quote unquote desirable. Yeah. Uh, you're not on the market anymore, right? So literally. Um, and uh, I, I, felt I was trying to think of ways to reinvent myself and mm -hmm. to, to look for residual income to say, okay, if I'm not so busy. But this with... happened after the separation? No, before. Before the separation? Yeah, oh. I went to culinary school in 20, 2011, 2012. I okay. graduated 2012. And mm -hmm. that's when things were kind of rocky already because, you know, I was working a full-time job, going to school. I was still being housewife yeah. and, you know, parent. Uh, it was a lot and I was approaching burnout at that time. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. okay. I, I, I didn't know. So do you think what triggered the um, separation is maybe you guys didn't have time for each other? Well, you know, I mean, this is for women out there yeah. who are very much married and, you know, what are the, what are the, um, what do you call that? The signs or things that when, you know, how did it go downhill? Like I, I only realized in hindsight mm -hmm. that giving your husband the cold shoulder mm -hmm. is a form of pride. It's we, we think, or I thought back then that by not saying anything and holding, biting my tongue, um, to not discuss our issues. Cause he, he would always want to talk right away and want to fix our issues, but it, he was very harsh. And okay. so whenever he would speak to me, I'm like, you know, don't, please don't raise your voice. Please don't talk down to me, you know, condescending remarks. And, you know, we, we even went to, um, premarital counseling for a year and a half okay. or no, almost two years. Yeah. A year and a half before a year and a half before we got married. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we were building a strong foundation for our marriage about do's and don'ts and stuff like that. But sometimes we are just blinded by our own pride mm -hmm. and uh, desire to get our own way. And I, I have a big fault to play in that as well because, you know, I always gave him the cold shoulder a lot when he was rude to me. And um, I don't think that that helped. I think, you know, if in hindsight, if I could have gone back, I probably would have not done that. Mm -hmm. um, I would have just humbled myself. Um, because that's really part of protecting your marriage, making the man feel like he is the head of the home. Yeah. And with me having had a successful career. Um, I was just going to say that. Yeah, Don't he, you think he was a little bit, of course, you know, men, they, they need to be fed. Their ego needs yes. to be fed all the time. And do you think it's because, you know, he felt a little bit insecure of who you are or something? And then all of a sudden from being in show business, he thought, okay, you can, you have time for me now, but then again, you chose another career. Yeah. Well, I think it's a little bit of both. I think, um, he felt intimidated and I thought my way of showing him mm -hmm. that you know, or, or feeding his ego was literally to serve him, feed him yeah. gourmet meals every day yeah. and like make sure the house was super clean. And, yeah. um, we shared accounts. So everything I earned was for him to spend and, mm -hmm. You know, um, and not, not that he was irresponsible, but, you know, um, you know, he did spend a little bit much and, uh, I, the, you know, there was a lot of pressure on my end to make ends meet. And, and then, you know, you know, the roles are reversed, yeah. you know, he's the one not necessarily providing for us and he's the one putting everything on me. Like, you know, you should be doing this. You should be like, you know, try to be the Martha Stewart of the Philippines. You should go into business. And it's like, I'm overwhelmed already yeah. with all these things that are on my plate, you know, and 
Um, yeah, I mean, and, and also when you're younger, the tendency is to look inward more. It's about me. Even if you um, hypothetically know that it shouldn't be about you, that love should be unconditional. When you're younger, mm -hmm. sometimes you just, you know, you're blind, you're blind to your own faults. And yeah. so I, I did apologize to him for all those things. And, you know, I think there still needs to be some, you know, um, forgiveness still yeah. that needs to happen between us because, you know, forgiveness is not just a one-time thing. Forgive, forgiveness is, is, a, is a process. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there still needs to be some stuff that we need to deal with in that department. Mm -hmm. But my favorite Bible verse is in uh, yeah. second, <laughs> what is it? second Corinthians five. It mm -hmm. talks about, um, and we have been given the ministry of reconciliation through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we are yeah. therefore Christ's ambassadors. So we represent Christ to people who don't know him and maybe even to those who know him. So, um, you know, I may not have been the best example of what a Christian wife should have been back in the day. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. And, um, but I love, I love, I love the, I call her the, um, for the data. I love that you actually, um, admitted that you have you know like you know most most couples that are that, that separate you know they blame each other yeah. i love that you also admitted somehow that there is something you know on your part that was not also perfect Mo most of it happened in hindsight <laughs> <laughs> not during um yeah so <laughs> right so do you think um okay sometimes this is what happened Sometimes when you're in a very successful career and or being busy, sometimes you forget, you know, you forget your faith. Sometimes, mm -hmm. not really forget, but, you know, it's like nowadays I make sure, oh my gosh, when I wake up in the morning, even if I know I'm so tired, I have to pray, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I know it's my responsibility, right? Yeah. Some, but when you're busy, busy and you're out there, up there, sometimes you... Somehow, somehow you take God for granted that, okay, God, I'll pray later because, you know, I'm a little bit busy. Do you think that happened, you know, somehow? Because I know you, you're from the beginning. I knew you, you're like super like, okay, let's I was pray. born with a halo. Like, yeah, she's like literally an angel. Well, <laughs> there was a part of my life yeah. that I was like, I took the halo off, yeah. By the way, my I have a dog that literally barks like crazy, but when Danita came, she's like, oh. She didn't really bark. I said, oh my God, I feel like maybe she's like smelling your angelic, you know, <laughs> perfume or whatever. She's just an angel. She, she saw the halo. The yeah, she's back. the halo. <laughs> well, you know, to yeah. answer your question, I think, um, yes, that is the tendency of most people. When we're busy, we, we kind of forget God. Um, it's been ingrained in me that God is so number one in my life. Um, I actually went the opposite route when I went through separation into divorce. I stopped reading my Bible. I was like kind of mad at God. Yeah. And I just allowed myself to go through that process. Like, you know, I, I didn't blame God, uh, but I was kind of mad. And I said, you know, Lord, why, why did you forsake me? Yeah. Um, here I am, you know, proclaiming you know, your goodness. And, you know, I, I, always, we would do testimonies in churches and, yeah. um, you know, I, I call myself a self-professed evangelist, yeah. <laughs> um, not ordained in any way, but, um, I felt like, you know, parang, or, um, in English, I, I was defaced. Yeah. Uh, and I had to go through a season of, um, feeling useless. I mean, like, you know, unworthy, uh, rejected, um, ruined in many ways but yeah i think now i've I, i've come to terms with everything that's happened and um i'm starting to smile again smile again we're gonna talk about that later yeah. she's smiling again i think they can already see the hearts in yeah. my eyes hey but i want i want you to share about that like you waited really waited you yeah. took your time now being a single parent uh -huh. you know getting there uh, I love this part. Did, yeah, I love this how part. How did you do it? I mean, okay. How did you move? I want you. To, I want you to share. Like it was not. It was not easy. Okay, it wasn't easy. Oh. Emotionally, financially, she had to move to the U.S. Humbled herself from being this big superstar, you know, in Asia, in my country, and then moved here to be, you know, to humble and you know, start from the, 
people. <laughs> don't make me cry, girl. Don't make me cry. No, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Moving here, not knowing, okay, what's next for me? Yeah, uh, it was really tough. Well, for your son. I did move to, to Vegas and I worked in hotels and stuff like that. Uh, for a while, but I was really working at you know nineteen dollars, seventeen dollars an hour, um, scrubbing floors and peeling potatoes, and uh, while my my husband you know was disappearing and all that, it, so I didn't know how I was going to put food on the table with my new job and um, not having any assistance, you know, yeah. with people you know we're Just, used to a team. We're used to a team. People pay our used, bills. People yeah. take care of our schedules. We we have stylists, makeup yeah. artists. And, and here, here I was doing everything by myself and raising a child mm -hmm. at that time on my own. So it was really tough, but um, uh, I guess I would say that I wouldn't exchange it for the world because now I am a, a very good actress. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all the trials. Thank you, Thank for, you for all, all the, the difficulties in our <laughs> That's why yeah. I, think, I think I'm ready for my next film, people. Uh, yeah, you know, I was I was always kind of just mostly um, casted in mm -hmm. light comedy and 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 hosting, and mm -hmm. um, I you know I even yeah. won an award in Asia Asian yeah. Television Awards Best Light Entertainer in hosting. Oh. Um, so that's that was kind of like always my strength. But when it came to doing crying scenes. Uh -huh. I mean, literally, sometimes I would just put Vicks on the tip of my, you know, yeah, the eyeballs. Yeah, so really never had any... Never, nothing really super, super painful. Big, yeah. Um, but, I, I mean, I just had that flashback um, when, you, when I said Vegas, where I would be in my car, and I would go into an empty parking lot, and I would just blast the worship, and I would cry and wail and scream and kick and, you know, uh, until I just had no more strength left in my body because I just didn't know um, what was happening and, you know, what was I going to do with my life, you know, and uh, so, yeah, that's why I'm a great actress now. <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know, um, as painful as all of that was, you know, um, it really made me depend on God and not on my own abilities anymore mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm, I'm a go-getter and I'm, I'm a perfectionist and I'm good at what I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, now I, I really had to depend on God for everything, for provision. And so eventually I ended up um, going back to the Philippines and starting all over because my spiritual family was very solid back home. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, uh, Eric, JP and I are going to need a lot of counseling and Oh, it was a it was it was a very good decision. I, I went back home with two suitcases and no money. Mm -hmm. um, I had to start borrowing money from my manager first before I could you know even buy a pair of shoes and um, I would even consider hailing the the jeepneys the, the, on the road what? like public transport yeah. uh, just because I couldn't get from place to place. I didn't have a car anymore. I didn't have a house. I didn't have anything. Um, and so yeah, we went through we went through a lot of counseling and and eventually I. Um, started to save up again and I was uh, I think after three and a half years I was able to buy my first condo unit it was for me because my whole life I have um, always earned and given everything to my parents um, to the point where eventually in 2007 we lost all five homes that we had invested in so I lost everything wow. and then you know I built up again a career and then got married and then now we separated and then I didn't have anything left anymore so it was again and um and so finally I, I, I bought this condo and I was so happy that finally for once I had something for myself mm -hmm. in, in my late 40s right yeah. like that's too late to be starting anything yeah. but um I started to have financial problems again mm -hmm. uh work wasn't consistent and um you know I guess maybe in the entertainment industry I'm not yeah, I'm, my name mm -hmm. is, you know, well loved by mm -hmm. Filipinos. I like to think, uh, but I don't think I've ever really been truly respected, other than as a host. Yeah, as an actress, not so much. You know, um, as a model, they say, you know, I have the face of a Barbie doll, but the body of a stuffed toy. So, <laughs> oh my God. so there goes oh, that part of my so career. Good. Yeah, um, and then culinary. You know, I don't have my own restaurant, so it's not as if the culinary world would truly accept me for mm -hmm. that. I was more of like a celebrity chef, yeah. creating recipes for brands and stuff like that, which 
hey, I, 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 I'm proud of what I've done and I have no regrets and I like wh where I've been. Yeah. Um, so, but it wasn't really generating income. So it, I eventually, I just had to give everything up. I said, I can't do this anymore. Lord, you're not directing me. You're not giving me clear signs. I'm just going to have to move to the States out of necessity. And yeah. so uh, I talked to JP. He agreed with me. We decided to pack our bags. I sold everything, paid off all my cash debts. The only thing left was my condo and I talked to the developer. They said, give us your three bedroom, we'll give you a one bedroom fully paid. And the amount that of the unit is worth a few million more um, than what I put in. So I, I, I made something from it and it's still back in Manila. So you're having it rented now? So no, I, there's, it's just sitting there, but I'm, I'm hoping to, to sell still, it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, and, but no, keep that. So at least you have something. Yeah. And last but not least, yeah. I get on the plane and I'm like, okay, Lord, I need a job. And then Jessica calls me and says, Yeah, uh, that's the like right timing. Yeah. So everything just fell into place, landed, made the phone call to my now boss. And uh, yeah. yeah. I she works with Island Pacific, my actually very, very good friend, close friend, my closest Filipino friend here in the U.S. Island Pacific, if you are into Asian food and everything, Danita, oh my gosh, she literally made this. I, I have to like <laughs> go there and literally go there and she made this. There's a dessert that's called Halo Halo. It's mix mix <laughs> in, in English. English. Yeah. In English. Um, but she made it into like a very, how they say modern. this, modern, yeah, uh, mod it's just modern, very, you know, sassy. Yeah. And we call <laughs> it of, first class. It's first class. These it's millennials very, say first yeah, it's class. Very millennial, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very millennial dessert and a little bit of the healthy, you know, like mm. the healthy part of it. So if you have, you know, any uh, island Pacific so um, island pacific, pacific supermarket supermarket yeah. and uh but but our restaurants are only in the santa clarita branch as of yeah. now and then hopefully we get to branch out yeah. so um i developed the menus for chirp and oink yeah. which is uh gourmet fast food or mm -hmm. you know elevated fast food so you have your uh, crispy pork cutlet and your chicken and it goes over rice and um, kind of like yeah. uh, rice bowls from around the world concept. And so, so good. Oh my God. You have to like open your own restaurant. <laughs> someday, someday. Yeah. And then the other one is Halo Halo, which is the ice desserts, ice desserts from around the world. So there. Oh my gosh. I mean, that, Aaron? What the We heck? didn't even talk about parenting. I know. Come on. <laughs> okay, no. Okay. So now that they've heard your testimony, um, what can you give us three advice? Just quick. One is about how, okay, when trials come, what do you do? Yeah. Third, give me some sort of like, give our uh, audience, our, our ladies, some sort of an advice about being a single mom. Mm. And the third, how to start, you know, loving again. How do you start your, and we'll, then after I have another question. Oh my God, okay. this is, this question, these questions deserve another 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll try to be as fast as I yeah. can. One of my favorite Bible verses is in uh, Romans 8, 28. It says, and God can turn everything around for the good for those who love him yes. and are called according to his purposes. And, you know, whatever pain that you've been through, God can turn that around for the good. And look at me now. Like, I couldn't act before. Now I'm best actress. Hope yeah. to win an award someday. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, that's kind of like joking, but yeah. with, in all seriousness, you know, you, one day you'll be able to laugh at your pain and you will be able to thank God. Uh, for allowing you to go through this, as difficult as that sounds, um, if you just trust him and allow him to move in your life. Uh, second thing I'll say is, you know, I don't think that faith alone is, is good enough to, to get us through life. I think it's really important for you to get to know your creator th through reading the word of God, yes. because it is our compass for life. You know, we may be sincere in our walk with God, but we can be sincerely wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have that moral compass. And I'm telling you, there is so much life in the word of God. It, it just, it, you know, when you're down, women especially, right? We're up yeah. or down in, in a day. We could be up and down 10 times. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you just listen to some worship or you get a word from the Lord. You read just one verse, one mm -hmm. Bible verse, and you hang on to that for the day. Or you listen to preachings. There's just so much material out there right now. There's no reason for you not to get to know your creator and to not enjoy getting to know him. I can praise and worship all day long. I, um, like a fool, will get down on the carpet in my bedroom and just weep and just 
tears of joy. Yeah. I'm not talking about, well, yeah, crying too, but mm -hmm. tears of joy just for the kind of relationship that I have because I know that whatever it is I do here on earth um, will resonate in eternity. Yeah. And um, there's something very special about knowing that, you know, um, my life has purpose, my life has meaning, um, my life has direction, um, that I impact the lives of others, and that my life, all my pains have not been all for nothing. So um, lastly, I will say, because I know I'm going too long, yeah. um, you know, they say that uh, bit bitterness is a poison that we drink thinking that others will die from. So mm -hmm. um, when I was going through depression for three and a half years, um, because of you know who, uh, yeah. so it took me a really long time to 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 forgive and to let go. But sometimes when I'm saying this on behalf of other people, don't judge that person going through depression and don't rush them through it when they are in a dark hole. Climb into that hole with them until they're ready to come out. Don't tell them that you should get over it because you know everyone has their own timing and a lot of there was a lot of insensitive people in my life when during that time so please listen uh, to what, yeah listen to what other people are saying when they say that they're down and depressed and just be just be there just listen to them and pray for them and not not be so prescriptive in in your advice to somebody and yeah and lastly uh, eventually as you let go of all of the heart, hurts and pains you will feel that the baggage or load on your back is going to get much lighter and eventually you know you'll be set free and you'll be able to laugh again and then you'll be ready for Mr. Right. Ah, speaking of Mr. Right, <laughs> I heard, I heard <laughs> that she finally, finally, finally found and met somebody yeah. special in her life. But guess what? You took your time. I did. You did not jump from one, you know, bad relationship to another. Well, I mean, kind of. I mean, there was two guys I dated, and then I found out that they were atheists, and, it, you yeah. know, it didn't work out. It didn't uh, work so out. the first one, six months, I was like, oh, no, I, this is not happening. Yeah. The second one was two years, but we were just friends. Yeah. Um, and we really liked each other a lot, yeah. but I just knew eventually when he said, I know I'm atheist now, I'm like, oh, this isn't going to work out. So... Yeah. Um, I'm glad that I didn't dive deep in, into that relationship, but it was uh, no regrets on that one. Um, and he's still a friend of mine, but yeah. now I know why I, I'm glad that I made the decisions that I did because the person that I met now is I'm, I'm just, I'm still in shock. We just had our first date yeah. a week ago yeah. and I'm still in shock that he's everything that I specifically prayed, prayed for. for. You know why? Because you actually obeyed. You did what, you know, God But you know what? I didn't fully obey, but God, even then, yeah. you know, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm not... He knows what's in your, yeah. in your heart. I just want to say that because for a time, I really thought that God wasn't going to give me someone because I wasn't good enough yet, mm -hmm. or I wasn't ready because I haven't fully submitted, mm -hmm. but God loves us where we're at. Yeah. And I think that's so important for women to know that you don't have to do anything for God to love you and for him to want to give you his best for you. Oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> Thanks, Dee. I oh feel like goodness. this one wants to extend. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish I had more time. <laughs> I love this woman. God bless you on your podcast. And thank you. Oh thank God, you for thank the you. impact that you have on women. Oh my God, Dee, thank you. I, this is not, you know, when I have, I have my podcast show, but I don't want it to be about me. I really, that's why I really want it about you, my guest, you sharing your testimony to all these women. So it's, we all have real life, real stories and that we want to share. So I think this is like the venue for all of you guys, women, to say that. Okay, my tip for the day. Our personal lives can be rocked by failed marriages, financial crisis, some illness, some loss. If we rely on the fragile footing of human wisdom, achievement, or even pride, Things may look good for a while while you're on it, but that weak foundation and relying on those things will not withstand the storms in your life. Mm. Ladies, you need to have a strong foundation. And you know what? The answer is really faith. Mm -hmm. Faith, 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 and love. Just give love. Okay, thank you so much. So don't forget to give love to the next person that you see after watching and listening to our show. See you next Monday. And cheers, Steve. Cheers. For new life, new love life, and Yay. new happiness. I love you, Jessica. <laughs> I love I you. I am this woman. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Bye. Ladies, today's episode is partially brought to you by Aaron Cox of ACX Financial. At ACX Financial, they specialize in life insurance with living benefits as well as secure strategies for generational wealth building. You can call 213-474-7360. Again, it's 213-474-7360 today for information to schedule your free financial strategy consultation.